Like I said last week, more often than not, as low budget filmmakers, we are very limited in gear, locations, and pretty much every other resource. So today we're taking a look at some more things that you can do when you find yourself in a tough spot, specifically when it comes to your visuals. Now last week we showed how to remove lights or light a night scene with just one light, but today we're taking a look at what you can do to add interest to a bland shot. Take this shot, for instance, it's just a collection of all the things you usually would not want to do in camera, you have your talent right up against the wall, which is a white wall, and our light is coming directly behind the camera, making everything that much more flat. Now our light here is the sun, so we can't move that. So of course, in this instance, the best thing that you can do is move your talent. Shift them away from the wall and find a background that gives you more depth and color. Plus, here we are putting the light on the side of our talent, giving us a much more pleasing look. Or we could also put the sun behind our talent, giving them a nice backlight. And like I've shown in some older episodes, this is a great way to light your talent by putting the available light behind them and then using a bounce to cover the front of them. But here we didn't even need a bounce since that white wall from this shot is right behind the camera. So that acted as a bounce and we didn't need any more gear. The point is your number one goal should always be to get the best possible image in camera on the day, there's almost always something that you can do to make sure you don't end up with a shot like this. But there are those times throughout my career where I've had no choice due to our time or resources, so I had to accept the shot that I knew I would have to try to make better in post. For instance, take this shot here from Ballistic. We literally had about five minutes to get all of Cambry's performance done before her time was up due to laws around working with minors. So we didn't have time to adjust the lights or shift things around that we would have liked to do to get a more finished look in camera. So my DP Chase and I just had to live with what we had. So in post to help the shot a bit and keep it from feeling too flat, we put in a subtle night sky to add some depth. I've done a lot of sky replacements for this exact reason. It's one of the easier ways to add more depth and polish to your exterior shots. But there are other creative things that you can do in post to shift the feel of your shots or accomplish the things you couldn't on the day. Like with this shot here, which originally looked like this. This one is from Thompson and his original shot isn't bad, but it wasn't the feel that he wanted for the shot. And since this shot was filmed using only existing lights at this location, and there wasn't time or gear to get the colors on the day, he had to make the look he wanted in post, which was this creepy nightmarish horror film kind of vibe. So first with the footage and After Effects, he's going to start by tracking the footage. Since ours is a moving shot, if, if yours is static, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't, you don't have to track it. Really? You don't, you don't have to track it. I didn't, shot. I realized, but then I was stuck in the sentence and it's just, I couldn't, it was, I just commit or, you know. Or die. But for us, we'll right click the footage and go to track and stabilize, track camera and let it do its thing. Once that's done, select a tracking marker, right click and create a null and camera. After Effects camera tracker does not always get great tracks with some shots. If this happens in your case, try a 2D track or Mocha as a backup. Now we have a 3D null track to the footage. So go up to layer, new adjustment layer. Turn on 3D for the layer and you see with ours, when we scrub through, the adjustment layer is close to the camera. But of course, each camera and track will be different. Now with the null selected, hit P on your keyboard, click the position and copy it. Then click on the adjustment layer and paste it. Now the adjustment layer is at the same position as the null. Since in our comp, it's now far back from the camera, we will move it to the center of the frame and scale it up. Skim through the timeline to make sure the edges of the adjustment layer stay out of frame, change the scale if they don't. With the pen tool selected, we'll first draw a rough shape for the upstairs like this. Then we'll draw a new mask for the stairs. Go to effects, color, correction, curves. For our scene, we will first darken the upstairs, then with the new curves, we'll tweak the contrast and change the color to red. Now that we can see what's being affected, hit F on your keyboard to bring up the mask feather properties, set the second mask to subtract, and we'll feather it a few pixels. Now we'll boost the feathering of the first mask to about 140 for our scene to have some gradual fall off. Now we're going to skim through the timeline again to see if we need to adjust the mask at all. Ours does move out of place, so we'll click on the stopwatch and set keyframes for the masks, then move forward to the end of the timeline and readjust the mask if needed. And with the frame selected, press F9 on your keyboard to set them to easy ease. Now duplicate the adjustment layer, delete the second mask and change the first mask to subtract. Then delete the first curves effect and with the second curves, we will drag this red down the opposite way to make it green. And that's it. Of course, you can try different color schemes and have more than two colors depending on how you want your scene to look. Now we have digitally gelled our scene. But now a quick presentation from Josh and then we'll look at one more technique. The use of Domain.com is imperative to one's mental and physical health. Slide. 
Here is your brain. It's gross. Slide. Here is your brain on Domain.com, because you realize Domain has all your website needs, including .com and .net domain names, and an intuitive website builder. It's blown. Your mind is blown. Slide. This is also your brain on Domain.com, realizing that it's reliable, affordable, and has all the tools that you need to build a website to share your ideas to the world. Your cerebral cortex slips calmly into a euphoric state of ease. Slide. This is a baby goat in a t-shirt. Slide. No domain extension will help tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, Domain has over 300 domain extensions to fit your needs from .club to .space. Slide. This is your brain when you use the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout to save 15% off domain names, web hosting, and email. You rich bitch. Slide. And finally, this is your brain when you don't use Domain.com. Logo. For this next idea, we're going to turn this shot into this, which again, it would be best to do this in camera, but if you didn't have the space in the scene or the gear or time to do it on the day, you can do it in post. To do this, we'll again jump into After Effects. First, go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and with the Pen Tool, we're going to draw a simple shape over Josh's face and torso, leaning a bit more to the right side since that is where our moonlight is coming from. Now go to Effects, Color Correction, and Curves. We're going to boost the brightness, then lower the reds and lift the blues slightly to get a nighttime moonlit color. Hit F on your keyboard to bring up the mask feather properties and boost it until the edges have a soft fall off. Duplicate the footage layer and bring it above the adjustment layer and apply a curves effect to the footage and this time we're going to darken it slightly. Then go to effects, color correction, tint, and dial it to about 20 to give it some slight desaturation. For our scene we wanted to add some tree branch shadows coming from the imaginary window so we will be using this image here from pexels.com. We'll drop it above the other layers and set the blending mode to multiply so that we can see through it. If you need to you can change the position until you find an area of the image that you think works best for the shadow. We like this area here, but we're going to flip it to have it coming from the other side. To flip it, we're going to click on Layer, Transform, Flip, Horizontal. Now we'll change the position and scale until we have something like this, and it's framing Josh's beautifully perfect eyes. Why? Why what? Why is it framing your eyes? It just looked best. No, was, I was, that was weird. What was weird? To add some subtle movement as if the tree branches are blowing in the wind, go to Effects, Displacement, and Turbulent Displacement. Turbulent Displacement! Turbulent Displacement! Turn the amount down to around 20, the size up to 120, and complexity to 2. We're going to click on the stopwatch for the evolution and move to the end of the timeline. Change the evolution cycle number to 1 so that throughout the shot the evolution is now changing, which looks not so great, but wait, there's more. With the footage below, change the track mat to Luma Inverted, and now it's showing the darker Josh footage only inside the tree silhouette. So now we have something like this, which still isn't great. That's quality content right there. <laughs> I know it. These branches look a little thick for our liking. Ooh, yeah, they are. Two C's. That's a thick tree. Oh god. So we'll first go into effects, blur and sharpen, vector blur, and turn the amount down to minus five, which this will squeeze the width of the branches. Nothing on that one? Nothing on what one? I just said squeeze the width of the branches. I don't get it. Now we'll go back to After Effects, Blur and Sharpen, and add Fast Box Blur. We'll increase the blur radius to 7. The higher the blur, the softer the shadow yeah, will be. Yeah, real soft shadow. How is that one dirty? Real soft. If you need to have the shadow distorting over your actor's face, you can also add a liquify effect and distort areas around to match the actor's facial features, but in our case, it wasn't necessary. If you feel like the shadows are too strong, you can control it with the dark layer's layer opacity. Now we want to add the window shape to the back wall here. For this, I grabbed a second 
second shot, a clean plate without Josh in frame and with that one light that we had for the scene now focused purely on the back wall. We'll drop this background footage into the comp and we'll actually still want it brighter. So we'll copy the curves effect from the adjustment layer and paste it into this new footage, then tweak it slightly. Now we will draw a few simple shapes using the mask rectangle tool to create our window. Since Josh is supposed to be standing in front of the window, we'll also mask a rough shape around him like this. And finally, you can see if we turn off this layer for a second, Josh's shoulder is in front, so we'll draw a quick shape around that as well. Quick tip. You can dial this exposure level to help see darker areas, then click the shutter icon once you're done to bring the exposure back down to zero. Now we're gonna turn the visibility back on and hit F to bring up our feather properties. We're gonna set the last four masks to subtract, then we'll change the feathering of the first four to around 50. And the last mask is Josh's shoulder, so we'll just feather that a few pixels. And of course, making sure to keyframe the mask if your actor moves. You can duplicate the tree layer and move that above this window footage and set the footage track mat to Luma so that we now are also getting tree shadows in the window if you'd like as well. Finally, slap on a gray to that bad boy and you should have something which looks like this. And there you have it, a few ideas to add things in post you might not have had the chance to do in production. Of course, again, you should never plan to fix in post if you can do it in camera. Doing things in camera will almost always get you the best result, but for those few times that you don't have the option, there are still ways that you can get creative and accomplish some great things. But that's it, and I'll see you next week when I mumble at Lady Gaga for two hours. Thank <laughs> you.